Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Suntec Realty's earnings conference call for Q1 FY24. We have with us today Mr. Kamal Khetan, the chairman and managing director of the company, Mr. Prashant Chaube, the chief financial officer, and Mr. Abhishek Shukla, the vice president of strategy and investor relations. Please note this call will be for 30 minutes and for the duration of the conference call, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. This conference is being recorded and the transcript for the same may be put up on the website of the company. After the management's discussion, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions. There is a Q&A session and we request to restrict questions to two per participant. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchtone telephone. Before I hand the conference over to the management, I would like to remind you that certain statements made during the course of this call may not be based on historical information or facts and may be forward-looking statements, including those related to business statements, plans and strategy of the company, its future financial condition and growth prospects. These forward-looking statements are based on the expectations and projections and may involve the number of risks uncertainties and other factors that could cause actual results, opportunities and growth potential to differ materially from those suggested by such statements. I would now like to turn the conference over to Mr. Ketan, the Chairman and Managing Director of the company. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, very good afternoon to everyone for joining us today and thank you for taking the time to participate in our company's earning conference call for the first quarter of the financial year 2024. We have marched into financial year 24 with strong footing. Our pre-sales grew by 16% year on year to rupees 387 crores and collection to remain strong at rupees 288 crores. This gives us confidence that we will achieve 20 to 30 percent growth in annual pre sales, considering the new launches planned for the second half of the financial year 24. Our operating cash flow continues to remain strong as we cross rupees 1000 crore mark over the last three years. This reaffirms our faith in the robust business model built by us, which has yielded operating cash flow surplus yield of 22 percent on the net, net worth for the last financial year. I'm happy to report that due to the strong cash flow, our net debt today stands at less than one quarter of the collection at rupees 264 crore. Our net debt to equity ratio is among the best now at 0.09x. After our last launch of Suntech Sky Park, Mira Road, we have now five large projects as growth engines which will continue to deliver strong cash flows and profit margins. In fact, our Mira Road project has achieved fastest monetization from acquisition to launch in just six months. Going forward, we are planning to launch two more large projects as growth engines, one at Kalyan with the total potential GDV value of rupees 9,000 crore, and second at Nepensi Road, with a total potential GDP value of rupees 2,500 crore. These, all these seven projects will then have a total gross development value for the company at rupees 30,300 crore, which will provide strong visibility of cash flow and profit margins in the coming seven to eight years. We are creating annuity income also and expanding our rental portfolio with two projects at BKC, BKC Junction, one which is at Suntech BKC, one which is Suntech BKC 51, is already pre-leased, and we have already got the occupation certificate for the same. Our average annual rental from this project shall be rupees 36 crore during the tenure of the lease. The second commercial project, which is Suntech Icon, another uh, uh, at the junction of BKC, is near completion and we are expecting uh, this also to be released at the same and the similar rentals. On the business development front, our goal is to have an optimum balance 
of growth and profitability. Within this framework, we have a strong pipeline of deal, deals under consideration, and we intend to conclude few deals in coming quarters. Execution in all our on ongoing projects is in full swing. Our ability to execute continues, continues to be rooted in our exceptional people and the unique in-house construction model, which allow us to control on quality and cost. We believe all of this is making Suntech business model gen generate asymmetric risk reward. In conclusion, now Suntech reality today stands at a much stronger footing than ever before, with increasing number of large projects as growth engines to give the company sustainable growth over the next few years. As you know, the company follows the project completion method of accounting. Going forward, we will see incrementally projects getting completed year on year, and we will start recognizing the revenue from this year onwards, and the same will be reflected in the financial statements. So it is important to understand that due to the project completion method, it is better to evaluate the PNL numbers on an annual basis rather than quarterly basis. We remain excited about the future opportunities and we remain committed to capitalizing on these opportunities in value, a creative and disciplined manner. I will now hand over the call to Prashant Chaudhary, our CFO, for more information on the earning performance in Q1 FI24. Over to Prashant. Thank you, sir. And good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the earnings call for the first quarter of financial year 2024. The financial and operational numbers have already been published on the stock exchanges. I believe all of you must have gone through the same. Let me give you some of the brief highlights of the financial performance. Our brief is to that Rs. 387 crores in quarter 1 of FY24 compared to Rs. 333 crores in quarter 1 of FY23, a growth of 16% on a year-on-year -year basis. We achieved strong collections of 288 crores in quarter 1 compared to Rs. 285 crores in quarter 1 of FY23. Additionally to this, I am happy to share our pre-sales and collection CAGR since FY21 has increased in tandem to 25% and 27% respectively. We have also generated an operating cash flow surplus of Rs. 76 crores in quarter one of FY24. On the PL front, the company follows project completion method of accounting and have reported a revenue of Rs. 71 crores with a core EBITDA margin of 43%. With this, we can now open the forum for questions from the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on your touchtone telephone. If your questions have been answered and you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may enter star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Participants are also requested to limit their questions to two during the initial round. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Adidev Chattopadhyay from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, first question is on our Kalyan launch and whatever Nepensi road next year. Will you let us know what is the status of the approvals here and how confident are we of the timelines which we have given in the presentation? It is the first question. So, Aditya, uh, we are uh, very confident on Kalyan launch. Uh, our, uh, the approvals, at what stage we are, we are expecting that we should be easily launching in next three to four months. Okay, so somewhere post Diwali, you are saying, right? It's a right uh, or I before. Would, I would uh, say on the outer limit, it should be close to uh, three to four months. Mm -hmm. It, we can okay. 
ओके ओके सर आई ऑन नेपेन्सी रोड इफ यू हेल्प अस अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द स्टेटस देयर ऑन द अप्रूवल्स नेपेन्सी रोड ऑब्वियसली वी आर गोइंग वेरी एग्रेसिव नाउ वी आर ओके इफ यू टॉक अबाउट दैट प्रोजेक्ट वी शुड कंसीडर मिनिमम 9 टू 12 मंथ्स Timeline. Okay, nine to twelve months. Okay, fine. So, and second question is on the accounting. Now we have seen peers uh, shifting to a mix of project completion and percentage completion for uh, the new projects. So, is there any thought in our minds also in talks with our auditors and all that something similar uh, could be done so that the financials reflect the performance more accurately of the company? So, Aditya, uh, in fact. Uh, we were on the percentage completion method before the Grand Trunton came uh, as an auditor on the board. Uh, we debated that with them. We, they insisted as obviously this is uh, for them as per the new uh, norms. Uh, they insisted. In fact, we shifted to project completion method. So as of now, I don't think we have any uh, thing in mind that we should be shifting back to. uh percentage completion method for uh, in near future anything unless and until auditor ask us to change it so they are pretty confident and comfortable with this method and they they in fact want us to be in this method okay okay now that question is mainly because a lot of our projects are uh, is not reflecting right now in the pnl so yeah 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 so but that's the reason to last two years i think aditya did not show any uh, uh good pnl numbers uh, but that's what now going forward incrementally most of the projects will co- get completed and that's why we said that year on year you will definitely see now good numbers uh, financial numbers in pnl and it will be incrementally seen in the uh, it will be reflected in the pnl numbers okay sure 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 so that's very helpful and that yeah we start from this year onwards we we, uh, we expect the way the projects are on the final stage of completion how we are seeing that yes okay sir fine sir uh, thank you uh, i'll come back in the queue for more question yeah thank you yeah thank you we have the next question from the line of pratesh shet from motilal oswal please go ahead uh hi thanks for taking my question uh first uh, is on uh, you know slide 16 uh, you have mentioned certain opportunities that you have been considered in your you know growth engine calculation borivali west is one where obviously uh, you know we have uh, communicated to the market but uh, sayan and jaipur uh, you know i mean what are these projects are are these projects like under consideration under discussion or and you know when uh, when are we going to execute uh, those so so the idea is we have not taken anything into consideration which are which where we are not seeing a visibility in next uh, 12 months uh, of the launch these are all uh, projects which are old projects uh, we are just saying that these projects are there obviously with suntech uh, it's in the public domain you know about it everybody knows about it uh we are not taking them uh, into any value valuation and uh, intrinsic value approach and uh, that's what that's all it is we are not saying that it will immediately we are trying our best to launch as early as possible even those projects but we don't see that anything can be launched in near future so that's why we are not taking into their visibility is not there that's the reason we are not taking into it sure i'm not particularly aware about it that way sorry, sorry? Oh, okay and I, i was just asking i'm not particularly aware about you know sayan and specifically jaipur project uh, if you can just share some you can, details you can, you can uh, i think you can discuss uh, 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 you can discuss with prashant i think it is uh, prashant can okay. share with uh, okay okay yes pitesh we can we can discuss uh, these projects which are there with okay. us offline sure 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 no worries and uh, in terms of uh, you know the rentals that you signed up uh, from upgrad uh, when can we expect them to start uh, generating rents for us and uh, whether the 36 crore also includes uh, you know the cam income or that would be over and above that and uh, uh, so, so some details on that so uh, occupation uh, as i mentioned that occupation certificate has already come so we have given them a possession so we should expect uh, the rentals to start obviously from next month onwards and uh, this does not include cam this is uh, uh, net net income 
This does not include CAM. Okay, and uh, so they're done with their fit outs and all? Uh, and we should start uh, seeing rental income start? Uh, we, have, we, have, we already gave them a, a soft position earlier for, for doing the fit outs and all. And uh, they've almost completed all their fit outs. In fact, uh, since the occupation certificate has come, I think they will be operational, full fledged operational in next couple of days or couple of weeks. That's all. Got it. Thanks. Uh, that's it from my side. All the best. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Vasudev from Nivama. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. So, you know, the first question is on the pricing front. So, how is the pricing scenario looking like? And have we taken any price hikes in Q1? Uh, hi, Vasudev. Uh, Prashant this side. So, uh, you know, uh, FY23 was a good year where you saw some amount of uh, price inflation in the projects. Uh, in the first quarter, we have not taken any price hike per se. Whatever price inflation had happened, it happened in the last financial year. Okay. Uh, and for the new launches, uh, you know, what kind of uh, pricing are we looking at? New launches, uh, 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 this is Kamal Kitan here, Vasudev. Uh, new launches, obviously the prices will be as per the market, whatever, uh, uh, what do you mean by new launches? The new launches like Kalyan or the existing uh, projects where the new launches will happen? Uh, yes, yeah, so, sir, in Kalyan as in, you know, if we will be charging the market rate, and so even wherever we have launched, that we have launch, what kind of price yeah. hikes are we seeing there? I, your question is not clear. Hikes means price hikes means what uh, we wherever we have launched, you have seen we command a premium as a brand, and there also when we launch, whatever the market is there, obviously we will have a premium, Suntec premium when we launch there. So we will take that premium when we launch. The uh, project in Pop Kalyan. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. And the second question is, uh, you know, how much is the current unsold inventory in the ODC, Naika, and the Vasai projects that you can get? Vasudev, hi, this is Prashant uh, Desai. So, in terms of in terms of uh, ODC from the already launched projects, I'm just talking about from the already launched projects, we have close to around uh, 500, 450 to 500 crores of unsold inventory in ODC. In Naigao, uh, in uh, in Naigao, I'll just give you the number. In Naigao, the unsold inventory that we have. Uh, from the already launched projects is close to around 300 crores and from Vasai from the already launched projects we have an unsold inventory of close to around 400 crores this is only what we have launched over and above we have the GDV okay so I also can give the same number for Mira or project that will be sorry uh, if you can give the same numbers for Mira Roll project as well, uh, you know, what is still remaining to be sold from the launch one. So in Mira Road also, Vasudev, uh, we have close to around 400 crores uh, unsold inventory from the already launched phase. Okay. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Murtaza Arsiwala from Kota. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Just a quick question. Um, you know, you put out that GDV of about 30,000 odd crore uh, uh, from projects to be launched. What would be the cost around this, number one? As well as, you know, you talked about launched projects uh, where in the previous question you talked about the unsold inventory. Can you also give us the uh, amount of receivables uh, from launch project sold and cost to be spent to complete those projects. So both for the future launches, what is the cost? And for projects launched, what is the recoverable 
from sales already made as well as the cost to be incurred to complete those projects. <laughs> Uh, hi, Murtaza. This is Prashant Desai. Yep. So I'll answer your question in, in three parts. So first thing that you ask is what is the receivables that we have from our already uh, on uh, uh, launch projects? So, yes. the, so the receivables that we have from our already launch project is close to around 2,100 crores. That is the number. Okay. Yep. Now, apart from that, for this launch projects and ongoing projects, the estimated cost which is yet to be, in, uh, which I have to spend is close to around, uh, close to around 1,000, uh, close to around 1,100 crores. That is the amount that I have to spend against this receivable that I am getting. Yep. And over and above this, I have the inventory, unsold inventory that we spoke about in the last uh, question. question. Correct. So, uh, so that is the number, and uh, uh, and for the for the upcoming project that we were talking about of thirty thousand three hundred crores of GDV, for that the amount that I have to spend on construction uh, per se is close to around five thousand five hundred crores. Well, that seems very little, five thousand five hundred. But anyway, I take it. Yeah. Uh, no, so, sorry, 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 Murtaza, sorry. 5,500 plus uh, uh, 5,500 plus 15, oh, total 7,000. Total 15. So, uh, Murtaza, 8,500 to 9,000 crores. My, my bad. I'm extremely sorry, Murtaza. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. We have the next question of, from the line of Saran Gupta from Briarwood Management. Please go ahead. So, um, you know, you mentioned on the, you know, uh, opening remarks that you plan on, you know, doing business development to kind of grow the business and, you know, have a few deals under consideration. I'd love to hear a little bit more about, you know, just the medium-term outlook of the business development in the next, you know, two, three years, as well as, you know, how, you know, you're thinking about things maybe differently from the last one, two years when, you know, you were less active and, you know, what's changed in the market to cause you to be more, you know, more aggressive today than the past, if that's the case. Hi, Saran. Yeah, so, uh, Saran, we have, uh, obviously, we are in the pipeline, so it will be difficult for me to name the projects which we are negotiating and are in pipeline. I can say aggressively, uh, as I said in my opening remarks, that we are, uh, negotiating at least four to five deals, uh, which we are confident of closing at least three out of them. And whatever we are looking now are, are all large projects. We are uh, mostly we are looking only large and big size projects. That's what is a, a strategy going forward for a company. It is, and so uh, that's what I can talk about for going forward project. Uh, and regarding annuity income, we have start, already started building up uh, that we have uh, we, we have leased out one commercial asset at the junction of BKC. Again, I can confidently say the second uh, BKC asset at the junction is at the advanced stage of negotiation for pre-leasing uh, because the best advantage I think we have today the. Uh, vacancy level uh, vac vacancy level of the offices in BKC is almost uh, negligible, I would say. Uh, there is no big large spaces which are available. We will take full advantage of that by leasing, and we are, that's why we are t tying up the lease for like 10 years, 15 years or more than that. In fact, the first lease what we signed was to, uh, in BKC 51 is 29 years, and that's how we want to take it forward. And obviously, we are looking to monetize uh, again, looking at the good market, we will also look into start very soon uh, the commercial uh, development at ODC also, Gurigaon West, and there also we'll try to create a big annual income from there, there as well. Got it. Very helpful. And then just one last follow-up question on the uh, you know pipeline of new projects is that are you looking at only JVs or are you also considering out outright land acquisition? You know, out of these four to five deals that so, you are in mid stages on. 
So, uh, uh, out of the five, very frank, I can say that three are the full JDA model. Two, what we are negotiating are the buyout. But I can say whatever we are buying, like how we uh, built up a Nepensi road, uh, on a similar model where we are seeing a good value can be created out of it and good IRR can be maintained. So that's where we are looking to buy out only, only those projects. That all makes sense. Uh, you know, congratulations on this strong quarter and good luck. Excited to see these uh, joint ventures over the next uh, few few quarters. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Sarin. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, if you have a question, you may enter star N1. We have the next question from the line of Prem Kurana from Anand Rathi Shares. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. So, uh, so just to kind of continue on this, the rental transaction that we've done, uh, so, I mean, if you could help us understand your thought process for this business now, uh, the idea would be to kind of retain these assets or the idea would be, I mean, once we, I mean, you have a, a tenant in place, uh, and then you could look at monetizing these assets. And also, I mean, for ODC, we used to have this large plan of almost around 2.6 million square feet of area on commercial side, Avenue 5 and 6. Uh, would you want to continue with the same thought process? I mean, you would want to have 2.6 million square feet of a combination of commercial or retail, or the uh, the the, uh, the area has changed over the years now. I mean, it has been brought down, and the residential component has gone gone up. So, what we are looking uh, to develop Fifth Avenue as uh, definitely combination of commercial and residential because uh, what we see the value, uh, because residential is selling at today 30,000 rupees a square feet plus plus, which gives a more value to the company immediately, and it gives a immediate cash flow, which gives a better return and better ROI for the company. Uh, nevertheless, but to monetize as quick as possible, we also want to start simultaneously the commercial asset as also, which is close to another SSI of 2 million square feet, which is there, uh, close to 2 million square feet, which is their area what we can construct in 5th Avenue, uh, over and above 1 million square feet of residential. Uh, so even that, uh, we would like to start simultaneously. And the, when you ask the question whether we want to, so what kind of returns, I can just give you an example. Uh, from what we have leased out recently, the BKC 51, uh, Prashant, you would like to share the num uh, number, what uh, any idea? Uh, so, uh, uh, hi, Prem, this is Prashant, uh, this side. Uh, okay. So, basically, you know, uh, on an, uh, our invested capital in BKC 51 was close to around 125 crores. So, against that 125 crores, we are making an average rental of close to around uh, 36 crores. So, that gives us a return on invested capital of 30%. And this is what we are, you know, targeting in our commercial projects. We want to do commercial projects, but with this kind of return metrics. Sure. But then the idea would be to kind of retain these assets because, see, I, I, I understand Avenue 5 because it's a large asset. I mean, you can have it in your portfolio and kind of uh, continue to see uh, rental escalation, let the rentals grow and create more value. But when I look at BKC or, let's say, for that matter, Suntech, I can, uh, these are smaller assets. Uh, not sure. I mean, if you want to have these assets continue with you or, uh, you could also look at uh, monetizing once these are leased out because the, the maximum value that you were supposed to create, right? I mean, in terms of 125 crore rupees that you've invested, that has already multiplied. And now onwards, it will be mostly uh, uh, adjustment because of the rental escalations that you uh, get to have. So so idea would be to kind of unlock this capital and look for more growth opportunities or let the asset appreciate over the, over the years. So yes, uh, uh, good. Uh, so first of all, when, when we have tied up the BKC assets, also it's uh, escalation is there year on year. Uh, so th the rentals are will be increasing year on year. It's in the agreement that every year the escalation is four to five percent. So that is there in the agreement, and that will give us the escalation. When you say monetization. Definitely, we will see today, it is not that if we can monetize, uh, because of that, if we monetize, the growth will be faster, 
or slower. I don't think Suntech has a very strong balance sheet. We are always disciplined in our balance sheet when we uh, when. So it's not that we are holding any acquisition because the Suntech balance sheet is um, weak or not strong or something like that. But nevertheless, if we feel that we should monetize and create more value, and when the when we see that value creation will be more when the interest rate cycle reverses. And only then, obviously, we would like to see to monetize, not at this stage where interest rates are high. So, and what we are seeing, looking at the current economic situa situation and the interest rates, how it is behaving, I think we are only heading after a few quarters, maybe we will start seeing interest rates coming down. And when the interest rate starts coming down, only that is the time we should give a thought that whether we should monetize or we should retain the assets. That's what it is. Sure, sir. That answer. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. All the very best. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Pratyumna Chaudhary from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. So, uh, my first question is regarding the pre-sale growth. Uh, basically, uh, both pre-sales and collections can you, can you, on a YOY. Can you start? I, it was, uh, uh, we could not hear you properly. Can you start once again? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. It's now better. So, uh, both pre-sales and uh, collection in this particular quarter on a YOY basis was uh, slightly slow, on a slower side. So, uh, any particular reason for that? And uh, on the same part, uh, like, uh, are we confident of achieving 2,000 crores of pre-sale in FY24? And uh, what would be, like, could you give maybe some sort of a project-wise split where this 2,000 crores would come from? Uh, hi, Pradyuman. Uh, uh, Prashant Desai. So uh, this this pattern that you are talking about in terms of growth in pre-sales and collections, that is basically if you look at the last three, four years of Suntech, our first quarter is generally the uh, uh, weakest quarter. And that is seasonal in nature as well in Mumbai. And going forward, the, as the second quarter, third quarter, as the festive season comes into play, you start seeing robust uh, sales and collections. And construction activity also increases at that point in time. So that is the reason why you are seeing it's nothing, it's, uh, it's nothing to do with anything else. It's just that. And new launches are also going to come going forward. So the second question that you asked about 2,000 crores of pre-sales, so I would just like to tell you that uh, if you look at our growth rate from FY21 till FY23, we have grown at 25% Kager. So we are targeting 20 to 30% growth in our pre-sales year on year. So that is what our target is, and we will try to deliver on those targets that we have set for ourselves. Uh, no, like my question was, uh, uh, this 2,000 crores of pre-sales, uh, some broad split of... Uh, what projects would contribute uh, to this? So, Kamal Ketanya, uh, Pradyuman. Uh, so, obviously now, uh, if we launch Kalyan, we will have uh, six growth engines, what we call six projects. So, uh, uh, that 2,000 crore will easily come from all these six projects. And these are six large projects. I can't give you what will come exactly from where, but you can take it an average of 300 to 400 crore from each project. Understood, sir. Ah, understood. And uh, last very question. Easily achievable, just to give you an idea, it is like less than 100 crore, 75 crore per quarter from each project. Understood. And uh, second question, like there was a slide mentioning the GD, uh, the value 30,300 crores of cross development. But uh, realistically, how much do you think is achievable over the next, say, four years, four or five years? Uh, how much of the gross development value can we look at achieving on a realistic basis? So, Pradim, this is not, uh, first of all, I would like to correct, it's not 50,000 crore, it is 30,000 crore. And we said this is a GDV value. These are all large projects. But, and we, I said in my opening remark that 30,000 crore, all this GDV value, which will be achieved over a period of seven to eight years across all these seven, uh, seven projects. Okay. 
understood all the best thank you okay thank you kapil thank you we have the next question from the line of nikhil chanda from gm finance gm family office please go ahead yeah hi thanks i just had one question uh, you know in this slide i see signature signia uh, project at bkc for uh, gdv of 1500 crores now what i understand is that this project is long completed and uh, i'm just curious you know which if it is ready inventory why are we not aggressively trying to monetize this and sell this off given that the market is buoyant right now and why hold up this inventory for uh, such a long period of time uh yes nikhil uh kamal kitania i think uh we are uh, we want to sell it obviously asap as early as possible uh we are uh, we are trying our best to exhaust this inventory uh, we all know that uh, we have been uh, uh, last one or two quarters uh, we have not done good sales but i can assure you uh, after the q1 there is a lot of uh, uh, deals on a negotiation at a very advanced stage you will see a pleasant surprises in q2 and q3 okay perfect perfect because i mean you know this is like ready inventory so it's just the uh, just that you know the the timing just makes it so much better if you get the cash in flow right now uh, from an you know overall company perspective that is the logic which i was asking for i appreciate nikhil uh, uh, definitely we are uh, on on to it and we are confident we'll try to monetize now earlier than what we were anticipating the and way we are not pushing that in potential also which is there at bkc on the residential side so, uh, in these projects no so so uh, currently not uh, there is nothing uh, new residential nothing is there in bkc for us and and uh, you know my second question was on the overall capital structure i understand the gearing is uh, the the leverage is very low and uh, which is you know uh, very good but i'm just thinking if you were to get more aggressive in uh, you know new project acquisition or or uh, you know contracts would you look to change this thinking on the uh, on the debt structure or would you still prefer to keep it like at a at a low level at what it is right now or can you increase the borrowing to kind of get more aggressive on new project acquisition to you know have a longer growth trajectory so i have said that we will def, uh, we will be very aggressive we didn't say that we will uh, ever i said that we will not be but at the same time very disciplined with our cash flows so we will all, always acquire uh, looking at our strong cash flows and looking today what is our current cash flow we are almost like negligible debt so without building the debt uh, we will continue to be aggressive and more aggressive so if you see during the covid period when we in fact we started doing acquisitions uh, we did uh, some crazy acquisitions uh, four five big acquisitions and in spite of that we brought down the debt so that will be our philosophy not that uh, always we'll be able to bring down the debt because that is already very very low but uh, we'll try to deploy the cash flows which are coming strong cash flow which are coming uh, to acquire aggressively more new projects perfect great thank you so much all the best thank you thank you we have the next question from the line of shri kartik velamakani from investec please go ahead hi uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, you launched the uber luxury project at nepnc which would have a, a pricing close to a lakh or more than a lakh rupees per square feet uh, uh, in addition you also carry inventory in bkc so how, what would be our go to market strategy uh, from a reinvigorating the sales channel given that uh, we've not been able to do any pre sales uh, in the bkc project So, Sri Karthik. Uh, so, we have not launched. Uh, just to correct uh, the question, we have not launched Nepenthi Road. We are looking to launch over uh, in next nine to twelve months. The micro. We have to understand the micro markets are different. Both the micro markets are totally different. One is at BKC, and that is at Nepenthi Road. And the inventory, when we talk about BKC, it are it is the three towers. 
each tower is like half a million square feet. Uh, and when three towers were like, it was more than 1.5 million square feet, uh, and which is a large inventory in BKC. When we are talking about the Napensi Road, it is just close to two lakh square feet. So the dip, there is totally di different, uh, uh, totally a different uh, uh, micro market and different sizes. And just to tell you, uh, that BKC we have already sold more than 80 percent of the in inventory. It is this last 10-15% of the inventory which is there with us. And that inventory you have to understand and appreciate that when we started BKC, we, we started at 15,000 rupees a square foot was the micro market price. In fact, Suntech created the value in BKC for residential uh, only after the Suntech project came into that micro market. Otherwise, Bandra East was always considered for low income group or mid income group. In fact, Suntech could change the perception of the low income group location to a high income group. And today every developer or anybody or everybody would aspire to create a luxury project and uh, in, in and around BKC. In fact, there is nothing which is available in BKC, so in and around BKC. So there the inventory was very large and here the inventory is much lower. So, and that micro market, uh, how much is the absorption is much more in Nepensi that the ma that micro market has a higher absorption of luxury than the micro market of BKC. That's how it is. Uh, thank you. I have, I have a uh, uh, question to Prashant on the core EBITDA margin calculations. If you could explain uh, uh, what are the direct attributable costs that you are uh, assuming in arriving at a 45% EBITDA margin? And in, in, this, in this context, when you are uh, 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 when you're, uh, selecting your EPC contractor, I know some of the construction you do, uh, mo or most of the construction you do uh, on your balance sheet, but in case if you are selecting a contractor, what would be the margin at which you are uh, uh, signing those contracts? Hi, 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 Shri uh, Prashant Desai. So uh, 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 basically, the intention was, uh, Shri, this time is that to bifurcate between attributable costs and non-attributable costs. What we mean by that is that the pro projects which were getting recognized as revenue in the PNL, against those projects only, how much cost was getting attributed? So that direct cost included both con cost of construction. It included employee benefit expense, and it included other overheads as well. But these were directly attributable to the projects which were getting recognized in the PNL. So this gives us a better understanding of the margin that is being made by that project which has been completed. So this is what we wanted to show this time in our in our presentation because we follow project completion method of accounting, and as per accounting standards, the other indirect costs which is like advertising, brokerage, these, these were earlier getting deferred. They were treated as deferred revenue expenditure. But now they have to get amortized in the quarter in which you are spending, irrespective of whether you are recognizing the revenue from that project in the PNL or not. So that is the reason why we wanted to, you know, show this bifurcation and help people like you understand that the projects which are getting recognized, though the amount is small, but the kind of profit that we are making on that is huge. So we wanted to show that. The objective was to show the margin. And this would also include your head office uh, cost that you would attribute to the specific project, right? Absolutely. Absolutely, Sri. Uh, uh, and lastly, uh, let's say in this quarter there's a 40 crore indirect cost number. Essentially, from what I understand, all of this pertains to potentially the sales and the advertisement and stuff that's going on outside the uh, uh, projects where you recognize revenue. Is that, is that the right, uh, or is, is there anything else that is part of this indirect cost? No, absolutely, absolutely uh, Shri, you are absolutely right on that understanding. Understood. And, and the second question on potential uh, margins at which you are basically signing contracts to any of these EPC uh, contractors? So, uh, so Kamal Ketanya, Shri, uh, we don't give any third party, con uh, means, uh, we are, total construction is in house, uh, Sikhartik. Uh, there is nothing which, uh, we are, uh, uh, there will be small, small maybe contracts, but those, like, 
the, obviously any contractor's margin would be like 10 to 15 percent or highest in any specific small contracts or something would be 15, 20 percent max, max, what else. But uh, that is the advantage, but mo mo all the constructions Suntech does is announce so we can maintain a better quality and better margins. Understood. Thank you so much. Thanks, Srikan. Sri. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to the Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Ketan, for closing comments. Please go ahead. Thank you all for taking out the time for Suntech earning calls. In case, if any of your qu queries have been left unanswered, you can get in touch with me or my team. Uh, we look forward to your continued support. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Suntech Realties, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.